good morning everybody just going to um, bring this up on my Facebook page one second Technology seems to be a little bit slow here today. Oh, it's chilly here today. I think we're in the gone into our minuses. Oh, they don't look so bright, as bright as they should be. Let me see. Um Hi Judy, happy new year. I don't think I've talked to you since Christmas. Just so you know, I've been using our microwavable pot holders. My mum and sister hog them all, but that's okay. Because they were for the family. Thank you so much. Very thoughtful Christmas gift. Hello Paul. Haven't talked to you in a while either, but I do ask after you every day. Um right Dally? I think she's talking to dad. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? Good, we've got quite a few people on um, already. Hi Debbie, how are you doing? Coffee in hand? Oh yes Debbie, I just had a quick cup of tea because I know I'm going to get another cup of tea um, ready waiting for me when I'm done. So today um, I wanted to take a step back. I've given you two weeks of in inspiration for the uh, Hi Lynette. Um, I'm doing good, Paul. I'm doing good. You and I remember we've got to have that chat too and just catch up. <laughs> we haven't done our weekly meeting like we were supposed to. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just a uh, good morning, Gloria. Uh, good morning, Apexa. I was so happy that you made it. Apexa is, um, for those of you who don't know Apexa, it's an amazing, amazing, extraordinary artist, um, that hails from India and it was thanks to Apexa that Dali and I uh, got to do the Hope, Pain and Hope YouTube Hop, which you can find um, 16 to 20 amazing artists uh, all over the world on our respective um, YouTube pages. So if you go to my Facebook page or Apexa's, um, whose name you can see on the live here, you can go and watch all those videos and I encourage you to watch them all because it's coming to a um, end in a couple of days and there's lots of prizes to be won. So go subscribe and comment on these amazing artists. Hey Britt, you made it. <laughs> it's not the jelly plate one today, but you made it, that's awesome. Happy birthday, Martin. If he's around anywhere, um, hope you had a good one. Looks like you did with your loved one, your sweetheart Britt. Um, yeah, so yeah, I encourage you to support all artists um, and go watch these amazing YouTube videos. And again, it was Apexa who um, organized and did this all. And Dali and I look forward to doing many more uh, with Apexa and all these other artists. So I wanted to take a step back, just going back to what I was saying. I wanted to take a step back from providing the inspiration for the black and white competition. I did two weeks in a row. So I want to do something a little bit more colourful and um, I don't know, I didn't really have anything in mind. What I did know was I had this pack of jumbo, hi Liliana, I had this pack of jumbo playing cards um, hanging around in my craft room. They're actually new so they've not been really, you know, used. So I thought, why not let's just pull out one and see what we can do. And then I decided to do a second one. Now look, no one is going to turn out the exact same. So that's my disclaimer before starting my Facebook Live today. Because you really don't know what you're going to end up with once you start going. So this was my very first one. You can actually see... Um, the spade in the back it was a two of spades so you can actually see that in the back and you can see all the textures uh, on that hi Linda how are you today um, you can see all the textures on the back there this is a very simple hi Vimy uh, from India hi Vimy um, 
So I've got lost my train of thought there, Bimi. Um, so this is very textured background. It's a very, very simple, um, quick technique that you can do with uh, products that you have at home. And then on the back, um, what you can see on this one is a white cardstock because what I did, I put it onto black and then white. And uh, yeah, I like, I love the grungy backgrounds too. And I love how the white stands out with a simple sentiment there. Now, the reason I could have left the plain cards as they were, but you know, I'm a little bit particular and I like my stuff to be finished. But the reason I also did this is because I think what I'm going to do, and this might be something that you guys might want to do also, is I'm gonna take these cards and when I have time, I am going to do techniques on these with different um, medias. And then what I'm gonna do is write on the back what I used. And maybe a quick, um, just a bullet point, uh, put down this first, did this, did this, stencil, dried, blah, blah, blah. And then that way, what you can do, you can punch a hole in here and um, you can then have this like a, a flip like album if you will a binder and then you can keep all your techniques um, in one place and it won't take up a lot of space so that's my plan is just to write on the back what I did and what I used and then if you're ever wondering what this product looks like with that product or what does this product do you can just go back to these cards and have a look so I'll be punching some holes in there and then I decided to do one that was a little bit more pinky uh, thanks, Apex. Uh, hi, Jill. I did one that was a little bit more pinky um, just because and I wanted to use flowers and I wanted to show off the stencil a little bit more. There is a stencil on here. It's my alphabet, Pipar alphabet stencil. But this one I wanted to keep a lot more grungy. And this is grungy, but it's just um, a little bit more um, prettier, if you will. A grungy pretty. So again, same thing, colors I used. Hi Debbie, colors I used, um, what I did, my process. And then it was funny because I had colored in my flowers and as you guys know, I was playing around with my jelly plate. I posted some pictures. And this was one of the things from my jelly plate that I used as a mask. It's just a die cut. And if I get brave enough, I'll do a Jelly Plate Facebook Live. Um, I'm very new to it, uh, although I did create my uh, scrapbook pad from it. Um, so this is what this looks like. It's so pretty. This is what it looks like on this side. And then on the other side, it's that, that kind of olivey color. So after I had done this, I had this sitting around. You guys know me. I don't throw anything away. Hi, Linda. So... I put it on here and I thought, oh wow, that looks so pretty on there. It really matches. That's why you don't throw anything away. But then if you turn it around, um, it really picks up the colors in the background. So never throw anything away. Keep everything. You never know. Um, hi, Leslie. Never know what you're going to be using. Okay, so without further ado, Let's go and start. So what you're going to need is just, I'll do two because I just don't know how they're going to turn out. So it might be a little bit of a longer one. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so just two plain, plain cards. Now, plain cards, as you can see from the glare, um, they're very, very slick. So this is why this technique works well. If you want a more um, organized kind of grungy background or where you want more control, then you can take a sanding block and sand off, um, thank you, Christine, you can sand off the uh, shiny, glossy texture. But we're not gonna do that. So look, we're gonna, look, I'm like I said, there's a disclaimer because I got no idea how this is gonna turn out. So we're just gonna go for it. There's a lot of drying involved. Um, I mean, not a lot, but there's a certain amount of drying involved. So just bear with me. As I always say, talk amongst yourselves. Just bear with me while I go through the process and I'll be having my um, heat gun on. So the first thing I did was um, I grabbed a bunch of Lazors. I like Lazors because they're like a watercolor, if you will, but they're a stain. 
so you can use them on anything so I've just grabbed a bunch of colors um, there's about I think 13 different colors in the Lazores there, there's so many different colors but on both of them um, what I did my base was the walnut so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put a little bit down on here like this okay then I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna spray some water you can take your card and you're going to notice, see how it's not picking up everywhere? See how it's almost disappearing and coming together? This is a look that you want. Yeah, a little bit messy, but you know what? That's what happens when you want to just create funky backgrounds and get really grungy. So you can do one and we'll do the other one while we're at it. So just pick it up don't you don't know where it's gonna go and that's why I say you don't know what you're gonna get and then what you want to do is you want to start drying this otherwise you can see it's already starting to um, disappear um, Paul I know this question has been asked before um, Lazor stains they're in a very thin acrylic right not a pigment So Lazor is a water-based stain, Apexa, and I'll actually just grab you a sample of what it looks like. So Apex, so this is olive and walnut, and it's used on this box, and it's a water-based stain. And what it does, it allows you to do a stain on your wooden work, um, but it allows the grain to show through. So it says true to your wood. So I've done it on this box here, but I just want to show you another box that I did. Um, and it's the red one with the chestnut and ebony, but what you can see, you can see the stain still through your word. So this is a red. It's a very, very vibrant um, stain. But that's what a lazor is. You can actually see it right there. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely. And they're just so thin, as you can see. Um, but I love using them. So we're going to carry on with this. And we're going to pick up some more color. It's so funny because when you do this and just do the process at home and you're not live, it's just um, seems a lot faster. So put down a little bit of water and pick up some color. I'm going to dry it right now.
Okay, so that's your first layer done. Of course, you can keep going and keep going as much as you want to. Um, there's no right or wrong way. As you can see, I've made a good old mess under my little acrylic block here. I should probably get a bigger um, acrylic block here. It's hard when I'm using both hands. That's what I'm going to blame it on. Then what I did was I brought in the, the grungy one. I brought in a bit of the... Um, pine stain and with this one I just did a very little amount of water and then I just picked it up like this um, with less water then I can actually get in and get all the areas And then for me at that time, I thought it wasn't quite yellow enough, but that's um, entirely up to you how you want to do it. Okay, and just pick it all up. And you can see, look at that background. It's very organic for sure. And then what I did, I wanted it to be a little bit brighter and I brought in the yellow Lazor. And with this one, believe it or not, I didn't put any water down. Um, I just went for it. Look at that color. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, maybe I must have put some water. This one's gonna be a little bit more yellower. Now, if you don't like the colors, you can always go back in with more. And then what I did was I brought this Stamperia Aqua Media Color um, Aquamarina. Aquamarina. And all I did was I just dropped some areas down where it was white. This one, because it's grungy, I'm just trying to really remove anywhere where there's some white. And also introduce a different color. And then just get a brush and just help it along and bring in that color in different areas. And what it's going to do, your stain will stay because it is a stain, albeit it's water based. And what you're going to do is you're just introducing another color in there. Okay. Just tap off any access. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to dry that. I'm just going to clean this while I'm at it. You can see you've got those blue areas just very slightly. It's 
more of a blue wash on it okay you can see them in there with this one um i did bring in again the um pine just a very little bit of water but no yellow on this one Now for this one, I had actually used um, magenta when I did it on this one. I had actually used magenta, but I don't know um, if I want to do magenta because I just want to do something different. So this is what this one looks like. I mean, you could even leave the backgrounds like this if you were doing this. I mean, I just, I just love them. But this time, let's let's do purple just because because our purple's in here. Like I said, they come in about 13 different colors. I was gonna put these away so I don't get them all over me or spill them. Okay, let's do the purple, shall we? Let's see what it looks like. I haven't used purple very often. Let's give that some water because I don't want it to be very dark. I'm almost a little bit scared. Um, see what happens, but it's quite nice. So let's do that. I mean, I could bring in some magenta if I wanted to. I'm just going to put some water on here. They have two very different backgrounds. 
two very very hi Peggy two very very different uh, background oh thank you Apexa oh thank you you can catch me every Tuesday at 10 here every Tuesday um, so two very different backgrounds all with using a little bit of stain obviously you know when uh, like I said when you're doing it at home and I'm not doing it on a Facebook like it's a little bit more <laughs> smoother and I'm not using two hands I'll put something aside and then come back but so now you have two backgrounds so your next step is what you want to do is I like to um, start doing my shadowing um, kind of right away just because I need to know where my coloring has to go not my shadowing my distress and what I'm using is stays on jet black and the reason I'm using stays on is instead of my versifying or distressing is simply because I need it to stay permanently one it's a slick surface and two when I introduce other products I don't want that black to smudge so much so I always keep my stays on dober in a separate um, bag simply because um, it is a solvent and I don't want to have it anywhere so you're just gonna come in and you're gonna notice what a difference it makes just to get the black stays on on this and how quickly it really just does bring it together Now, for me, like I said, the purpose is so I can write on the back what techniques I use. So maybe I'll do a crackle technique um, and then I can write that down what I did. But you can see already how gorgeous is that? It's already coming along just with a little bit of stays on around the sides. Same with this one. Just bring it in. I'm not too fussed. Um, if it comes in over the top, it just adds to it even more. And I've also, the cards already had rounded uh, corners. Um, but when I did, when I placed them down on here, I just rounded off my corners on the black cardstock and white cardstock. Thanks, Jill. So now you can see how much that background just so just go to your regular pound shop or dollar store these are just like i said jumbo playing cards and these are great ways to practice techniques um and great ways to like have a little index of what you're doing now the next step is this is where you can come in and you can start doing some um stenciling okay so I'm just going to put the stays on away, put it in its bag so it doesn't make everything smelly. And I'm just going to take this off, whatever that was. Okay, so next what we're going to do, um, we'll use a couple of stencils. So because this is kind of pretty and pinky, this is my Pepper stencil. Um, this came out with one of my collections for creating craft. Um, it's called flower burst so what we're going to do is we're just going to take because i want this to dry quickly and because i know by taking heat to it will become slightly poofy i'm using the gesso primer paste by um, pentart now i'm not looking for a smooth finish here i'm not looking for a crisp clean stencil i'm kind of looking for something if it gets a little bit distorted obviously use this one so many times um if it gets a little bit distorted i'm not too fussed about it um because i want it to have that kind of gringy kind of look to it so i'm just trying to see where i want this to go and where shall i have this go so i can never make up my mind Okay, so just a few little bits of stenciling. Uh, again, just using the Primer Paste Gesso by Pentart. And again, I'm not looking for anything crisp. I just want to get some um, Primer Paste down. Now, this is a thicker stencil, so you will need a little bit more. Not that much more, but just put a little bit here and there. You can tap a little bit off to the side just to give it some little bit of contrast. Oopsie daisy. 
and then you can come in and do another one wherever you want. So again, not too worried about again a crisp stencil in here. There we go. And maybe we'll do a little bit something, something. Uh, maybe we'll put that little baby one over here. Oopsie daisy. Okay, there we go. So that's the flower burst pip art stencil. And then I'm just going to put this aside. So you can see how pretty does that look already. It's a little bit stark, but very pretty. Thanks, Pat. And then with this one, all I did was I took my alphabet stencil. Uh, this is a Pip Art Elf, the alphabet stencil we have. Um, and I want to do it. And this one I actually covered all over. And again... I'm not looking for complete coverage, just wherever it goes is good enough. And I'm not gonna to be too fussy about lifting this off. Again, I'm not looking for a clean stencil. I just need to get some texture down. Although it turns out really clean. That wasn't my intention. <laughs> okay, so now we have that. So that was the Pentart Gesso Primer Paste. So today we've used a lot of Pentart, as always, you know my go-to. And we've used uh, just one spray from Stamp Period. But I'll show you what these look like close up already. So there you go. It, my intention, like I said, wasn't to make it that clear, but it happens. This one, I was a little bit able to get it a little bit more muckier uh, the way I wanted it to. So two backgrounds, two very, very different backgrounds. So let's go ahead and dry that. So give me a moment. I don't know if 
that's going to be dry enough for the next step but we will give it a go so if you notice on these they look quite poofy right they look quite quite poofy thank you pexa they look very very poofy so if you dry and get most of the drying done about 80 to 90 percent of the drying done and then you take the heat gun really close look what happens can you see they're like a marshmallow it just expands so that's what i've done can you see how that's all bubbled up so you want to dry it see uh, about 80 to 90 percent and then you want to come in really close and finish off like you saw me doing so it's all bubbled up now it will mush down a little bit but you've got this beautiful beautiful texture that's going on okay this one i didn't come too close to but you can see i've still got a nice um bubble thing going on is that what if there's such a thing so the next thing i did was i came in with my black soot hope i got that right paul i have a different dauber for this and all i did for this one was i just came in and just gently dabbed right over it well, like i said this might be a bit wet for me to do this but i'm doing it anyway just picking up the raised areas it's a little bit wet just picking up the raised areas there and now this is what it looks like so it's more mixed in it's not as uh, showing as much now the next thing that you want to do is take a paper towel and what you want to do is just rub it in certain areas just to make some areas a little bit lighter so you have the different areas now this one's going to be a lot lighter than my other one as you can see and then if you want to you want to introduce more color onto it you definitely can now i'm just going to pull out my stays on right now make sure i don't mix up my daubers here and i'm just going to darken it a little bit more but like i said no two will be the same I just want it a little bit darker in certain areas and with this stays on I know that it will stay if I try to even rub it back. And I just want more of that grungy look than I have right now. Now one thing I want to tell you if you want to go ahead I'm just going to show you on here if you want to go ahead you can actually do some scratchings um, because we didn't put down a primer what happens is you can scratch off some of the background and you will see that I did it in this one um, like right there and right here I've done it where I've scratched off the background I've scratched it off right there um, so if you want to you can do that see how that gives that peeled paint look you can do that because simply because um, you have nothing that's tying that stain down, no primer or anything. You don't need to do primer on the wood, but because these cards are glossy and slick, you need to do that. Now, if that gets too white for you, then all you need to do is... I'm having to sniff my daubers now. Mm, that would I have to sniff them because they're both black now. This is my stay zone one. I can smell it a mile away. And then it just come in and dumb down some of those white areas. That's all I'm doing, dumbing down some of those white areas. Um, because they're too white for me. Okay, so this one's nearly done. So look at that gorgeous grungy background that you've created. Now the next step that you're gonna do with this one 
is my splatters. Do some splatters. Let me see if I got my splatter pen here. A brush. Making a good old mess today. So just take a little bit of um, what am I using? I should tell you guys. Pentard acrylic paint matte. I'm using matte. Because my background is shiny, I'm bringing in a little bit of matte. I could have used glossy white or what have you, but not enough water. Okay. So let me get that a dry. And then all you need to do is bring in some sentiments and um, let me see maybe I will just these are just um, these are Tim Holtz die cuts if anybody's wondering and then you can just finish this off however you want you don't have to use um, this or whatever you have and then you put down your tag now remember for me I'm making these so that I can write on the back of them so we'll put that there like that and then the white piece here is where I will write my instructions on the back as to um, what I did and what I didn't do. But there's your first one. Obviously when it's stuck down, it will be a lot better, but I won't make you guys have to watch me sticking it down. But there's your very first background. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? And it's really nice because it's so glossy um, in the back. Hi Veronica, it's so nice and glossy. Okay. So that is card one done. And then with this card, um, I did a little bit differently. I didn't um, do too much scraping because I already have a lot of white on there. With this card, all that I did was, I'm not sure which way I want it up. I just came in with some Distress Oxides and I'm just trying to figure out if I've got a color that would match better. I wasn't... I wasn't planning on doing purple, so I'm just going to see if I've got a color that matches better. Dusty Concord. Let's see how that one works out. I've got a Dusty Concord Distress Ink here. And let's see how that one will work out. Just gently tapping it. I don't want it everywhere. Just in some parts of my tag. And then what I'm going to do is bring my black Distress Ink. I'll just show you what that looks like. So now you can see it. Um, and I'm just going to come in and slightly darken everything up and blend it in. I don't like the too much white on it. But you can do um, whatever tickles your fancy. So that's the Dusty Concord I used on there. So very different from the other tag that I made. I might, I don't know, I think I need another colour. Um... I've got this hanging around, peeled paint. Let's try peeled paint and let's just introduce a little bit of peeled paint. Oh yes, this works. I just want to have a little bit more different contrast in it. Sometimes you just have to fly by the seat of your pants with what you have on hand. I'll show you what that looks like close up. So quite different. Um, how large are the playing cards? The cards are 
um, 3.46 inches by 4.88 inches. 3.46 inches by 4.88 inches. So there you have that one. And let's give this a couple of splatters. Well, we've got the paint right here. Now you can see how lovely that background is. Purple is not my color, even though a lot of my friends love it when I do stuff in purple. You're welcome, Gloria. Um, so now with this one, this one was um, this one was very very simple. I just had um, somewhere now I've lost it um, a sentiment. <laughs> So this also will go on the back of a white card on the black and then you have it like this and put my sentiment somewhere, I don't know where I put it, I probably dropped it, don't even know it, but that's okay, we'll just use the sentiment that I have here of the other one there you go see how pretty that turned out and I know it looks like a long drawn process but it really isn't I did two at the same time so that's why it took a long time so they have two gorgeous cards. Whoopsie daisy, I don't want to put it in there because I need to write on the back of that. I don't know what to do with my sentiment. It looks so, it looks so bare without the sentiment on it. Um, so we'll do that one there, we'll do that one there. And these were the two original cards. So I will show you. They're all very nice. Um, thank you, Apexa. Oh, I hope you do, and please do share. Um, two very two different cards, two different colors. Um, again, they're never gonna. I won't be able to make them turn out the exact same again. But this is what they look like here. I'm gonna be really bad. I'm gonna pop this one off here, and I'm gonna put it on here just so that I can show you. Um, what the two new ones look like. Oopsie daisy, I keep messing them all up. And here's the two new ones. So one's very, very purpley. You're very welcome, Jill. One's very, very purpley and one is super gringy. So there you have it. Four cards. Um, well, for me, they're, oops, here I go again. They're for strictly for me writing down my techniques on the back. So we started off with, all we started off with was, was one of these, a plain Jane playing card. And there you have it. That's today's Facebook Live. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got to see some techniques. I know a lot of you have these Lazor stains, um, so this is just another way to use them, to use your Distress Oxides and Distress Inks, use your die cuts, um, and, and have fun. And this way, if you do this, and do it every time you're gonna do a new technique or try something out, you will never forget uh, what you did and what products you used to get there. So that's my goal, because I forget sometimes how I got there or what steps I use to get to a certain place. So that's it. I hope you guys had a fun 45, oh, nearly an hour with me. Thank you for joining me. I loved having you guys all here. And I will see you next Tuesday. Um, everybody should have been called for my classes with the city to say that they've been moved due to the COVID restrictions. And I have two card kits. They're ready to go. They've been made. Um, I'll be releasing them in about a week, latest two weeks. I am just waiting on something very important that is coming our way from um, Delia and myself. It's such a new release by the Shock Art Sisters, so we will wait for that. But thank you everybody for joining me. Stay safe, take care of each other, love each other, and I will see you next Tuesday. Any questions, just let me know. 
don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shock Art Sisters, and don't forget to check out the amazing Hope YouTube Hub that Apex have put on for us. Okay, everyone, have an amazing rest of the week, and we'll chat to you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye, Britt. Bye, Pat.